Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Lord of Life. I'm Pastor Joel. It's my delight to welcome you all to worship today. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or worshiping online, it's always so great that God gathers us together to be the church. A few notes as we keep rolling this morning, uh, one of which is during this season of Easter, our worship series theme is called All Heaven Broke Loose. You see what we did there? You get it? It's a real think piece. It's a real, you just sit on that one for a little bit and see what you think. So anyway, that'll help. In, I thought it was a bit, I don't know. I'll work on the joke. Um, so, so that'll help inform our worship uh, during these weeks of the season of Easter as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, speaking of celebrations, today is an amazing celebration. Uh, we have Holy Communion, of course. We'll have full instructions later. But as so many of you know, it's a very special day for a lot of the people in this room as we have a whole bunch of young people celebrating their very first communion today. So if you are celebrating your first communion, I invite you to stand where you're at so we can see you and give thanks to God for this big milestone in your lives. That's awesome. All right, kids, you can go ahead and sit down. You can tell uh, they worked hard on their stoles. They've uh, attended the First Communion Festivals. Um, just an amazing group and such a fun day to celebrate together. And I know there are a lot of guests here, a lot of extended family. Thank you for making this uh, event a part of your day. And I just want you to know that here at Lord of Life, uh, Holy Communion is a gift of God's grace available to all. So yes, you are invited to receive communion here. A few other notes of some upcoming events. Next Sunday will be the beginning of a, uh, a series uh, I'm calling Then Sings My Soul, and it'll be conversations between the music of different artists and our faith. So using our lens of faith uh, to uh, listen to and, uh, and respond to popular music. And so we're coming out hot. Uh, we got Taylor Swift. We're going to be talking about uh, Tay Tay next week, next Sunday at 945 and 11 o'clock down in the Luth Room. Bring your friendship bracelets. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. And then we'll also find ways to get some Suggestions from the congregation for other artists that you would like to have as a part of these ongoing conversations. So next Sunday, 945 and 11, Luther Room. Also next Sunday, we have a healing service that will be coming up. It'll be at 2 p.m. on April 14th here in the sanctuary. And this is an opportunity to uh, gather together. And maybe there's something in your life that uh, you are praying or hoping for healing. Or maybe it's in the lives of uh, people you love and care for. Whatever it may be. And whatever sort of healing uh, you are hoping for whether it's physical or emotional, spiritual, whatever it may be, uh, this healing service, 2 o'clock on the 14th, uh, is a good place to be. One last thing to highlight is that there's another adult forum coming up at the end of the month on April 28th at 11 a.m. Our Holy Land ministry team is sponsoring um, an event called The Everyday Life of a Palestinian, Doreen's Personal Story. So uh, she will be uh, uh, part of this conversation to uh, be able to share her perspective as what's daily life like right now in Palestine. We're aware of what's going on in that area of the country, always praying for peace. And uh, here we can hear from one of of our uh, friends over there about just what life is like. 28th, 11 a.m. down in the Luther Room. A lot else that God is doing in and through this congregation, lordoflife.org is where you can go to learn more, get signed up for everything, including our Sent to Serve Saturday coming up April 27th, all sorts of great service projects. More details are coming, but you can get signed up now. A few words of thanks. Thanks to David Frank for the music today. Thanks to the Canonical Choir for being here in full voice under Derek Craig's direction. Thanks to uh, Pastor Caitlin for leading worship with me. Uh, to everyone else who's serving in any capacity. Again, thank you all for making this worship experience a part of your day. And most importantly, thanks be to God for the gift of today. So I invite you to please stand as you're able as we sing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy, we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Walk among us. Reveal the grace of Christ in all that we say and do. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. There is good news this morning.
We have a bunch of special readers today. Some of our First Communion students are going to read the scripture for us. So I invite you to come on up. You know your parts. You've practiced them so well. All right, you can come on up. Today's first reading is from Acts chapter 4. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many owned lands and houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what they sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Please stand as you are able. Today's gospel is, reading is from John chapter 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples have met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then, did his, then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Great job. Thank you so much. And so we thank Della, Emily, Elsie, Paige, and Julia for our reading today. Do you think Jesus' wounds still ached when he visited his disciples after the resurrection? I mean, in, in John's gospel, Thomas declared, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. In Luke's gospel, when the risen Jesus appears to the disciples, they first think he's a ghost. So Jesus says, well, look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. So neither the gospel of Luke nor John tell us whether any of those present actually touch Jesus. I used to assume that, that Thomas, for instance, didn't take Jesus up on his offer to touch and see, since we hear right away Thomas proclaim, my Lord and, and my God. But I still wonder, 
after the resurrection, was, was Jesus still sore? Did his, did his wounds ache? I mean, let's, let's assume that, that Thomas took him up on his offer to, to touch and see. I imagine Thomas was tentative and, and gentle. And even though it was a week later when Thomas saw him, did, did Jesus maybe wince just a little bit as Thomas delicately felt where the, where the nails had punctured him, where the, where the spear had, had pierced him? Again, the gospel writers aren't interested in answering this question, so, so we don't know. And you know, many of us may think of the resurrection and figure that, well, no, it's the resurrection. Jesus' wounds didn't hurt. We may assume that, you know, Jesus didn't feel anything like that if someone had touched him after the, after the resurrection. And that, that could be. That could be. As I said, we, we can't know. But then if, if Jesus couldn't feel that, just what could he feel after the resurrection? I mean, do we just assume that after the resurrection, Jesus maybe only felt good things? Maybe. But would that mean that Jesus then stopped feeling empathy and compassion? That, that Jesus' heart no longer broke for the suffering of others? That, that Jesus wasn't a, able to sympathize or bear anyone else's burdens? I wonder if we imagine that in the resurrection only good things are felt, that only pleasure can be felt, do we even know what that is after a while? Can there be pleasure without pain? Or if not, does that just mean numbness? Because if so, that doesn't sound like good news. But even if Jesus' wounds didn't actively hurt, I wonder if, like many of us, when, when we touch our own scars, I wonder if Jesus could feel that memory. I have a scar on, on my left foot from a significant surgery nearly three decades ago. And even though my scar doesn't hurt, when I run my finger along that scar, I can feel that memory. And I want to be able to feel that memory because that scar holds an important part of my story. It's become a part of who I am. You may have a scar that holds an important, an important part of your story. A story maybe of perseverance, a story of, of healing, of survival, of second chances, maybe a story of new life. I'm sure that some of you have a significant scar. Some of you who are here right now have a significant scar right along your sternum, which is a very clear reminder of your heart surgery, without which, of course, you wouldn't be here today. That's an important part of your story. I know that there are those who have scars that came on behalf of others. I think of mothers with the uh, scars of, uh, of childbirth, those, and, uh, like those C-section scars. Those are a sign of life, a sign of love, a sign of care. Those scars and wounds of childbirth and motherhood are important and valuable. And even though we live in a culture where we're likely to be shamed for our scars. You know, those aren't what you're going to post on your socials now. We live in a, in a culture that tells us that our scars are unsightly. They're gross. We should hide them, not talk about them. But they're a part of our story. Because our scars carry our stories of healing, our stories of hope, our stories of new life. It brings to mind the Hand Song by the band Nickel Creek. The Hand Song. It, it begins like this. The lyrics go, The boy only wanted to give mother something 
all of her roses had bloomed. Looking at him as he came rushing in with them, knowing her roses were doomed, all she could see were some thorns buried deep and the tears that he cried as she tended his wounds. And the chorus goes, and she knew it was love. It was one she could understand. He was showing his love. That's how he hurt his hands. So then in the second verse, it's that evening after the, the boy's hands are tended and, and bandaged and cared for, and the lyrics say, he still remembers that night as a child on his mother's knee. She held him close, and she opened her Bible and quietly started to read. Then seeing a picture of Jesus, he cried out, Mama, he's got some scars just like me. And he knew it was love. It was one he could understand. He was showing his love. And that's how he hurt his hands. Jesus, you see, was showing his love. That's how he hurt his hands. And you see, just as our scars carry stories, Jesus' scars carry stories too. And just as someone who, who carries and who bears the scars of motherhood would not say to her child, look what you made me do. No good mom would say that. My mom says, of course, I did it for you. Well, that's how Jesus' scars tell his story. Because in the resurrection, he doesn't come back and glare at his disciples and point at his wounds and say, look at what you made me do. He doesn't say that. Instead, Jesus, we hear, shares a sign of God's peace, invites the disciples to experience joy, and then in showing his scars, Jesus is saying, of course, I did it for you. And while we don't ultimately know if Jesus' wounds still hurt after the resurrection, I trust that Jesus still felt everything deeply. Because that's the kind of Savior he is. That's the kind of God he is. He's willing to bear these wounds on our behalf. Because it turns out all heaven broke loose on Easter. You see, those scars, they were supposed to be a sign of his defeat and his death. Those scars were supposed to signify the end of the Jesus movement. Those scars were supposed to scare his followers off so they would bow down to Caesar instead of Christ. Instead, those scars are a symbol of Jesus' story with us, of Jesus' compassion for us, of Jesus' desire to bring wholeness and healing to the world. And yes, we have to humbly admit that there is mystery when it comes to resurrection, that, that we don't know just what happened and how. We can't fully explain what happened between Friday and Sunday. But we can trust that, that something happened. And, and like Thomas, we too can proclaim, my Lord and my God. Because you see, if there were nothing to this story, we we wouldn't be here today. Because history is riddled with all sorts of people who have claimed to be the Messiah. But then when they died, their followers and following all disbanded, everyone dispersed, their stories did not carry on. But we have Jesus. And if there were nothing to his story, his followers, they would have disbanded too because their claims of seeing him after the crucifixion would have been discarded and, and disbelieved, just like all those other false messiahs. But here we are today, still hearing his story, still experiencing Jesus, still trusting in Jesus' words that blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet have come to believe. And even though, unlike Thomas, we cannot see and touch our scarred God today, 
we have the promise of Jesus' presence with us. And that promise is extra special today because so many young people here are celebrating their first communion, this visible sign of God's invisible grace. And just as there's mystery with the resurrection, there's mystery with communion too. It's what I talked about with the students and their families at the First Communion Festival. We can admit that, that we don't exactly know what happens in communion. But there have been a lot of churches who have argued for a whole lot of time about all the details that we can't possibly know. But I think it's more important for us to simply trust that God is up to something special, something good in this meal. We can trust that all heaven breaks loose whenever we break the bread and drink the cup, that Jesus restores us, forgives us, and then sends us out into the world to be who God created us to be. We are fed here today by our scarred God so we can go out into the world to share goodness and mercy and grace and wholeness and peace and joy. And we do this because in this meal, we remember that Jesus was showing his love. And that's how he hurt his hands. Amen. Please stand as you are able. As we offer our prayers today, I'll end each petition with Lord in your mercy. Please respond with hear our prayer. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O oh God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders the work for the well-being of communities. Give CPAs and accountants energy in this busy tax season. Watch over anyone seeking employment, that they may experience peace and much-needed sleep in preparation for interviews. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice and safety, for teenage friends who are stuck and need help, and for anyone who longs for healing, including Andrew, and others that we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. We pray for the family and friends of Wally Erickson, Wayne Irene, and Jolene Bassey. Provide them all comfort and peace as they grieve. We also offer prayers of thanksgiving for the gift of your Holy Spirit with Aria as she celebrates her baptism this weekend and for all of the young people celebrating their first communion. Bless them and their families with the promise of your everlasting love, which brings hope to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. All right, you may be seated. Uh, today for our Thanksgiving moment, we have a special interview of Amira, who is a student we are sponsoring at the Dar al Kalima University in Bethlehem. So I invite you to turn your attention to the screen to hear a little bit of her story today. Hi friends at Lord of Life Church. I'm Chris, the Executive Director of Bright Stars of Bethlehem. And I'm actually coming to you from Bethlehem. And I've got here today our friend Amira. And Amira is a special person, I think, to your church because you're supporting her. Um, and she has something she wanted to share with you today. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Lord Ch Church of Life uh, uh, for giving uh, me the scholarship in Chip. Yes, thank you. Thank she you really, very much. She really appreciates it. And I can tell just from her smile and meeting her today how much she's thriving here. I'm going to ask her a few questions just so you can get to know her a little bit. So, Amira, how old are you? Uh, 37. 37, okay. And you are, what is your major here at DA? Uh, sport management. Sports management. Yeah. I asked her earlier about her favorite sports. And? Uh, fitness and uh, Ping pong. Ping pong. Originally she said table tennis, which is the same thing. Yeah, as ping pong. That's ping awesome. Pong. So um, you are in what year? Your second, second year. Okay, you have four years, so mm -hmm. she's got a couple more years to go. Um, what is your favorite thing that you like about this this universe, this special place, Dar al Kalama University? <laughs> انه بتسمح للطلاب يبتكروا او يبتكروا فكره معينه والجامعه تتبناها وتعمل لهم مشروع يعني بيشجعوا على الابتكار اكثر. Absolutely very innovative and I think we've shared with some of you that we actually have an entrepreneurial hub that's being built as we speak so exciting things to come. I'm glad you're flourishing here, and I'm so glad that you are part of our uh, Bright Stars family, too. So thank you, friends. I'll send this video out right away. Take care. Thank you very much. Bright Stars of Bethlehem is a long-standing ministry partner with Lord of Life, and we give thanks for them and continue to hold them in our prayers as the Holy Land experiences this time of unrest. We pray for peace and an end, towards, an end of violence. Uh, the offering will now be received in all of the ways listed on the screen. You can read them anyways. If you'd like to pull out your phone as an act of worship, we give you thanks so much for your giving to this ministry and beyond.
Please stand as you are able. prepare for Holy Communion, whether it is your first time or manyth time, we remember that in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new promise in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the communion assistants and ushers forward to get ready. Um, the ushers will help lead you to where you need to be. And you'll come up to the station and you will receive the bread. And you will dip it into either the wine or the grape juice from the one person. The wine is red. The grape juice is white. Um, and there are gluten-free options available as well as pre-packaged, if that makes sense for you. Um, if you are choosing not to receive the elements today, that is just fine. Um, please put your hands over your heart like this so we can offer a blessing and we know to give you that. Um, all of this, the elements, the blessing, is all a means of God's grace. So please know that it is for you. You are all welcome. So please come. The table is ready.
please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And as you go into your week, may alleluias echo in your ears. May forgiveness lodge in your heart. May holy light guide your path. And may God bless your coming and your going. Amen. children of God, loved beyond measure, sent to serve the world.